can begin. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming. My name is Clara Scher. I'm a PhD student at the Rutgers School of Social Work, and I'm joined by Carrie Scher, who is Deputy Director at the Bergen County Division of Senior Services, and Lauren Snedeker, who is Assistant Professor of Teaching at the Rutgers School of Social Work. So we're so happy you're here. Um, I'm just going to start off with a very brief overview of Dementia Friendly Communities Movement, um, and then I'm going to hand it over to Carrie, who will then discuss the development of a dementia friendly community here in Bergen County, New Jersey. And then Dr. Lawrence Snedeker will um, kind of end by discussing the role of social workers in the dementia friendly communities work. So first, what is a dementia-friendly community for those who don't know? Um, Alzheimer's Disease International defines a dementia-friendly community as a place or a culture in which people with dementia and their carers are empowered, supported, and included in society, understand their rights, and recognize their full potential. Um, and this image over here is taken from their Dementia Friendly Communities Key Principles Report, which is listed down here for anyone who's interested in looking afterwards. But it just discusses the ways that Dementia Friendly Communities operate um, with people living dementia at the center. Um, some of the goals are increased awareness of dementia, challenging stigma, improving, improving care and services, and achieving social inclusion. And that's done through partnerships all throughout the community, through multiple sectors, the communities that, that in which they live, the physical and the social environments, um, and the organizations that make up that community. So this is um, an infographic taken from a report that Emily and I actually worked on um, discussing dementia-friendly community initiatives um, in Massachusetts. And so we gave this kind of overall development of the dementia friendly communities movement worldwide, because this really is an international movement. Um, so just in the interest of time, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. But if you're interested, the link is down here. Um, it's and I can put that in the chat um, once I'm done. But Basically, the dementia friendly communities movement started in Japan um, and it moved to the United Kingdom shortly after. Um, and it's really um, emerged all throughout the globe in all different countries. Um, moving along in the United States, um, it's really taken hold first in Minnesota with the Act on Alzheimer's Initiative, which was really a statewide collaboration that really promoted um, you know, community centered responses to support people living with dementia. Um, and that kind of inspired the Dementia Friendly America movement um, to really begin. And that was a national organization um, that is still very much active today. And it was launched in 2015 when 35 national organizations came together to really formalize this movement in the United States. Um, and here we have Dementia Friendly Massachusetts is just one statewide collaboration as part of the Dementia Friendly America movement that has really taken hold. Um, and just before I hand it over to Carrie, who will speak more about the local uptake in New Jersey, I just wanted to really highlight Dementia Friendly America um, and uh, just their, their role in this movement. So it's, again, it's a national network of communities, organizations, and individuals that really wanna make their localities more dementia friendly. And once a community joins the network, uh, Dementia Friendly America offers technical assistance to those communities, including a toolkit, sector-specific guidance, and best practices that are really synthesized from all over the world. So I'm going to hand it over to Carrie now. I'm in both of the um, webinars right now. Good morning. As Clara said, I'm Carrie Shear, Deputy Director of Senior Services for Bergen County. And just to give you um, quickly my background and how I got to be here, um, I am a licensed social worker and I've worked in geriatrics my entire professional career, which is about 25 years. Um, most impacted by uh, working at the Christian Healthcare Medical Adult Daycare Center, where I worked daily with people who had dementia um, and just became kind of passionate about the subject and, and what we could be doing to um, make people more aware of what was going on and support the aging community. Um, I came to work at the county a little over a year ago 
and um, realized that one of the things that we could be expanding on was um, helping the aging and dementia communities. So um, in looking for existing programs, I kind of stumbled on Dementia Friendly America and in talking with um, the Act Now Foundation's um, founders, Christine Allen and Carrie Lopez, uh, we decided that we had this in common and we really wanted to, um, to get something rolling and seeing what we could do in Bergen County. So um, as it says on the slide, we're partnering with Act Now to educate and train communities um, about dementia in order to create dementia-friendly spaces and provide a better understanding of the challenges those with dementia and their caregivers face and provide improved access and engagement with the community for caregivers and those with dementia. So um, we completed the application, submitted it, recently got approved and next slide please. Now we're working with um, a variety of organizations and sectors in the community, including those you can see listed um, and many more. We're still recruiting people for our, our action team and um, hoping to kick off our action team uh, by the end of the month. And, um, and have a big kickoff event sometime in October. Um, you know, the goal of the action team is to kind of bring all the great minds in, <laughs> together and, and see what we can come up with in terms of what, what differences we can make in the community. Um, next slide. So in becoming dementia friendly, these are some of the, um, the things that uh, sectors can work on um, as we provide education and trainings. Um, healthcare systems can promote early diagnosis and options. Businesses can support customers with dementia and employers support employees who are caregivers. Communities of faith can welcome and engage these people. Local governments can plan and implement services such as transportation, public spaces and emergency response that enable people with dementia to thrive in the community. Neighbors and community members can understand and support these people. Uh, legal and advanced planning services, I'm sorry, services, <laughs> develop uh, proactive procedures and guidelines to address legal challenges and provide um, dementia-friendly legal services. The list goes on. I mean, there's a, there's a training guide for every sector of the community. So um, we are hoping to get out and train as many sectors of the community as we can and include as many people as we can. Next slide, please. And this is something part of the dementia-friendly um, initiative has this um, dementia friend option where anyone can um, log on to the, uh, if you go to the website listed at the bottom of the page, um, it's basically a, a series of online videos and information um, explaining what it's like to live with dementia and educating people kind of in a simple user-friendly way about dementia and about what people can do on their own to be more dementia friendly. So that's something anyone can do. You can become a dementia friend simply by going to this website, watching some videos and, um, and learning. So that is where we are in Bergen County and we are looking forward to getting our action team off the ground and, um, and working on our initiative here in Bergen County. Lauren? Thank you so much, Carrie and Clara. I'm so pleased to be here with you both and everyone in the room. Um, so I'm just gonna move my Zoom box, sorry. I'm like, ugh, so bad at that today. Um, so I'm just gonna speak very briefly about the connection that the Dementia Friendly Initiative and Movement um, has uh, a place for social work, obviously. So we know that social workers, if you're a social worker in the room or maybe not an official social worker, but that's your title and your agency, that's what you've been doing in your community for as long as you can remember. Um, we thank you for that service. And we know that social workers of any you know, educational background, case management, community health workers, we all have a powerful role for those living with any sort of memory loss. We serve as advocates. We can serve as emotional support and provide counseling. Of course, we help find resources and we also do our best for end of life care in terms of preserving the voice of the person throughout, throughout the process. Um, I would say that social workers work in many of the sectors that the dementia friendly movement is currently targeting, such as healthcare and businesses like e and employment, um, employment assistant programs, faith communities, local government, we're really everywhere. So we're really poised to be able to help champion, maybe become a dementia friend, maybe think about how this movement applies to the work that you're doing, if there's a gap, if there's something missing. Because certainly not only 
is the person that is diagnosed with a dementia related illness touched by by this experience, those around them are also. So that could be children, family members, friends, loved ones. And I like to say not so loved ones because that's the reality. Um, of course, the NASW, the National Association of Social Work Code of Ethics includes the following value, the dignity and worth of a person. So when I think about dementia friendly as a licensed clinical social worker myself and someone who's worked with older adults and with caregivers, I think about this work and I think about that code very strongly and, and very passionately because I think of, you know, providing support and privileging the voice of people who may go unseen um, because of the diagnoses that they're living with. Um, it certainly has to do with building inclusive communities, thinking about the ways that the dementia friendly movement and age friendly movement can intersect, which we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And also, just a quick quote, decentering dementia as an individual experience and recognizing the complete and unique aspects that shape an individual's life. That's from a text. I know I'm an instructor, teacher, so I always have to bring in like something from what I read all day. And I think that's really important to consider in our practice and how the dementia friendly movement really helps set up that in the work that will take place in Bergen and hopefully future areas of the state. So that's my piece. And I guess we're opening it up now to questions. We wanna make sure we get to your questions or comments or anything that you'd like to share. Hi, hi, this is, oh, hold on a second. Can you hear me? This is Scott. We can uh, hear you. I, you. You mentioned something strange very quickly, but I, I noticed that you said some friendly, but not so friendly. Uh, explain what you mean. I think I know what you mean by that. But number two, like anything else, are like family members kind of, you know, they want to take advantage of this person and then they see some group coming in. They're like, who the hell are you? Or actually you have a negative vibe from people like us that are trying to do good, but it kind of messes up the family vibe. Um, would, should I answer that question, Claire and Carrie? I, I could just explain. I said loved one and not so loved one, just um, sort of informally. Um, I Working with families and folks impacted by memory loss, I've gotten to know a lot of different families. That's just from my practice experience and just sort of airing that honesty that sometimes there is complicated family dynamics in the mix. Um, your second question... I mean, your dynamic of somebody coming in from outside and maybe interrupting and possibly them having negative, uh, you know, wanting to abuse the person and seeing somebody from the outside. I've, I've seen that in domestic violence, you know, when somebody from outside tries to help the victim, of course, the, the, the perpetrator goes after the person, not the victim. Mm -hmm. So is that a possibility or how do you handle, you know, I don't expect you to go into the whole thing now, but you understand what I'm saying with the dynamic. Um, I think so. It sounds like more of a practice question. I don't know if Carrie, you also want to, you look like you might have a response as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not completely clear. I just think, Scott, you're talking about um, the, the, like the potential for abuse. Is that what you're talking about? No, I mean, you're saying we're a good group of people. We're trying to help the person who has dementia, right? right so, right. but if the family has not good intentions and we are saying, Hey, we're here to help. They're, they might say, we don't want you, or we, we're good, you know, we're good, or get out of the way. Right. Well, so what yeah, I, I was just going to say that I think that um, people can live in denial, people can be resistant to help. Um, there could also be challenges, you know, interpersonal challenges, there could be a potential for abuse. But I think that might go back to what I was mentioning in terms of how social workers can really help lead these efforts um, as Carrie being one of them. Um, and now, you know, as a deputy director in terms of being able to bring that skill set in and being able to engage and build rapport with people who might really benefit from help. But I think we always, you know, follow the person. We always start where the person is. That's like classic social work. And um, we can't impose our resources on anyone. All we can do is continue to offer them and engage the person from the position that they are in. Okay, thank you. I just have something to say to Scott, because I actually recently had like a situation like this um, where, you know, there's a son helping out his mother 
and um well he's not really he like stole a bunch of money from her it's like a whole thing and there's other family members trying to get involved he took advantage and somehow got her to sign over for him to be the um power of attorney which is a crazy situation but i mean you know we just the only thing we did is we got adult protective services involved that's definitely you know they're the ones who are going to assess whether or not abuse neglect is going on and they'll be able to you know help out with getting the person you know out of that situation so just wanted to add that yeah thanks Aaron I just want to jump in and just add quickly that I I can see the parallels between dementia friendly and um, helping those who might not have gotten an MSW or might not have gotten training on what dementia is or the potential risks that exist for someone living with memory loss um, to be able to step in and recognize when something isn't happening as it should. And I don't know if that's a, a, a literal intent of the dementia friendly movement or being a dementia friend, but it certainly will come up. And I think that it's, um, it's just another opportunity for the movement to impact an injustice in the world. I have a question, Ron Spearman here. What, how do you address or deal with a person that is actually having memory loss, but is he's saying, I'm not, uh, I'm not losing uh, my mind. Everyone says I'm, I'm got memory loss, but I don't have it. And, you know, and how do you deal with that person along with family members that have to address it? Um, Cause you know, they try to address it in the, and the person said, no, I'm not, I don't, I'm not losing my memory. I know where I'm at. And then all the people get frustrated. Uh, I don't know if you can answer it all the way, but that's just see that I know it's happening in a family. Harry, I don't know. Um... So, you know, just, um, in terms of like my position from a social work practice, um, I, I think that having that conversation and engaging someone about something that's changing in their abilities is not an easy one to have. Um, what I used to say to clients calling for that very reason um, is to is to be patient because the conversation may occur or may need to occur more than once. And we may need to take a different approach. We may need to identify someone who the person really trusts and feels bonded to. We have to be conscious of who's bringing this concern up and how and who else is a part of that conversation. And I always suggest that we never want to stage it as sort of a family intervention because um, it's not the same as confronting someone on, you know, substance use. It's it's about um, something that's happening to them that they really have no control over, and that will only, unfortunately, get worse. So, those are my thoughts on that question. Thank you. I have a question. This is Deb Hallisey. When you are are working with with uh, businesses. Are you tapping into things like the purple table um, and how are you working with them? So we haven't, we haven't actually started yet. We're still in the beginning process. Our application just got approved and there, the Dementia Friendly America has a toolkit where um, it explains how to go about working with each sector. So, um, I mean, I don't have a complete answer for you yet because we're not there yet. But there are a variety of things. I mean, I can give you some examples, like for um, for banks, for example, it was um, it's about recognizing the signs of dementia related to money management. It's developing proactive procedures to address challenges, learning to use dementia friendly communication skills, um, knowing local resources so you can refer people. And then having um, having a champion in each organization who's going to sustain the initiative and spread dementia friendly information throughout their industry and the community. So um, there there are more things that are are specific to certain businesses, but that's kind of the overall um, you know goals for an initiative. And hey, Deborah, oh Deborah, I can also add so. Um, I'm going to put in the chat the link to the report that Emily and I put out that I was referring to early on in the presentation, but um, we had interviewed dementia friendly community initiatives in Massachusetts, and just qualitatively I can tell you that a lot of them worked with the purple table initiative with the restaurants, 
Um, and so there was overlap there, um, which was helpful to see that when they were going in and trying to train the restaurants, some of them had already had that purple table initiative there. So there, having that synergy, I think could be really helpful. Great, thank you. I was curious how often it happens where somebody with dementia has no family, has no friends, has nobody. That's that's the type of work we do. We have a, a unique alternative to the state office of public guardian where we train volunteers and kind of a big brother and sister sort of one-on-one -on -one, uh, match with somebody who, who lacks capacity. But do you see that very often where there is nobody or you have to try and find somebody or how big of an issue is that? It, it certainly is an issue in my experience in working in different aspects of, um, of the geriatric community, but I can tell you based on, so Dementia Friendly America has a kind of a, um, a uh, formula for figuring out the numbers in your area. And when I plugged in all our numbers, the estimated population in Bergen County um, of people who live alone with dementia is approximately 2,500. So if that gives you an idea, that's, you know, obviously our county has a large, we have, we have 220,000 plus seniors. Um, and then it's, let's see, about 17,000 people over the age of 65 with dementia and about 8,000 people over the age of 85. And then that last number, like I said, around 2,500 of them are living alone. So it's- How do you find that data? Um, so I had, well, I had the numbers from surveys and from um, the, uh, census. Okay. So um, I have I had some figures that I could plug into their formula and uh, got those yeah. numbers. So. Yeah, we're trying to expand. So anybody interested in the concept, let me know. Great. Yeah, I would recommend, Julie, just as an aside, connecting with the National Association of Social Work Chapter New Jersey to let them know of your service, because as a social worker, you know, many lives ago, I worked a lot with guardians and um, oftentimes they were court appointed, you know, from, from that list. And sometimes it wasn't always a good fit. So a lot that's of times also it's an idea. Attorney, right. Yeah. Or somebody with a caseload of 30, some other people or yeah. Yeah. It's not oftentimes, ideal. yeah. The elder law attorneys and they bring on so private social workers to really do the care management. Um, but sometimes, you know, there's, there's good and bad apples everywhere. Right. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes sure. the person doesn't have money to pay for a, an attorney. I have a client right now in Bergen in an assisted living, her POA just passed away who was her roommate. So, um, she has no assets just enough to pay for the assisted living and go on to Medicaid. So I have to find someone. So we're a private nonprofit. We're completely grant funded and um, we get a tiny little bit for the guardianship. I think you get 6% of you know income or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. call you. I, I, I'm the one that asks for your phone number. I will oh. call you tomorrow. I actually have, while well, I have you all on the, on, on the line, I have a, a one of our um, protected people slash ward um, living in Passaic County that has a guardian in our area and he's not getting there. They're supposed to visit monthly. So we're trying to find another volunteer in that area that maybe we could partner with and still have our support, but could actually do the monthly visits. So if you guys have any uh, resources on somebody in, she's in uh, Wayne, New Jersey in a, in, a, in a nursing home. So if you guys know of anybody, I'd love to hear about her. I'm trying to make a connection up there. Thank you guys.